Yo, 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 what's up? What's good, everyone? Welcome back to Manga After Dark. I have finally caught up to Jujutsu Kaisen, and holy shit, that shit's gas, man. How come y'all haven't said how heat this series is? Man, <laughs> I started watching the anime in two days. I was done with the anime. Then I went to the manga, started from chapter one. About four days, I was caught up with the chapters. Holy fucking shit, the Shibuya uh, incident arc. Bruh. Bruh. Kamu no Ritoshi. What the fuck, bro? Like, <laughs> like, bruh, like, he took, he's taking, like, Orochimaru to the next fucking level. Dude's out here, like, hopping, in, he's a fucking brain hopping from body to body. His ass, he was, he's fucking Yuji's mom. And I get in the, I'm not guessing they're alluring to that he was uh, Junpei's dad. Like, it's weird shit. Like, holy shit. I did not expect this series to take the turns it was going. So many awesome moments. So many awesome fucking characters. Jesus Christ. Jujutsu Kaisen has been heat. Like, I, I, that was like the easiest 144 chapters I've ever read. I read that shit so easily. And I loved every moment of it. So now I'm glad I could react to it weekly. Um, so yeah, so here we are with chapter 145. Uh, so, um, so I'm pretty sure there was a break at the end of 144. So they got into the they got into the into the basement. They're meeting with Tenjin to talk about like yeah, what to do next, and I guess get some information from him about like what's going on. Maybe he has some, like some backstories that he could fill in. Uh, so let's dive in. So Jujutsu Kaisen. Chapter 145, The Back. All right, so we started off with Yuki. She goes, aren't you going to say hello to me, Tenjin? Then we got Yuji, this guy. And everyone's just looking at him. And then this Tenjin, he looks he looks like a, like, um, interesting design. Okay. Um, this isn't the first time we've met Yuki Sukumo. Why did you, uh, why did you close off the tombs uh, of the Star Corridor? Uh, Yuki asked. The intention says, I was afraid you might be in alignment with Ken with Kenjaku. After all, I cannot see into the human hearts. Then Yuki goes, Kenjaku. The intention goes, the sorcerer who was once Noritoshi Kamu and is now inhabiting the body of Suguro Geto. Then Yuki says, that name suggests uh, compassion and salvation. Give me a break. Then Yuji goes, um, Master Tenjin, why do you look like that? And Mugumi says, he sure has guts cutting in on an important discussion. And Tenjin's smiling. I may be immortal, but I'm not immune to aging. After 500 years, you, you look like this too. Then Yuji goes, for real? 11 years ago, after failing to merge with a, with a star plasma vessel, my aging accelerated and my self-awareness as an individual diminished, the very world became myself. And Yuki thinks to herself, so there wasn't another star plasma vessel then. And then she says, and that's why your voice doesn't proliferate. And Mugumi says, excuse me. And then Yuta says, we came to ask about Kenjaku's objectives and how the person, how and how to open the prison realm. Will you tell us uh, what you know? The intention says, I wish I could simply say yes, but there's one condition. Yuta Okatsu, Yuki Sukomu, and the death painting room. Two of you must remain here to serve as my guards. Alright, that's, 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 a, that's a fair condition. Uh, fucking Mahito, fucking Mahito, bruh. One of the best villains. Like, he, he was such a fucking troll. And holy shit, he was hilarious. And he was so... F bruh. June, bruh. When he killed Junpei, I... Bruh. <laughs> I, <laughs> and then even when he killed Mekamaru, that was... And Nanami. Oh, Nanami when he died. Oh. Oh. Nanami, no. <laughs> Fucking Mojito, bro. Uh, but yeah, he smoked the Tenjin's last guard, so I guess this is a fair trade to like give me a couple of guards and I'll I'll help y'all out. And Yuta says, "Guards, aren't you immortal?" Then Maki says, "Are you worried about the seal?" 
And Yuki says, no fair. You haven't even told us uh, why or how long we'd have to do it. Tenjin says, so then I shall speak of Kenjaku. His objective is to force the evolution of all human beings throughout the land of Japan. Uh, then Megumi says, we heard that, but what exactly does he intend? Why didn't Kenjaku use your barrier that time to, and turn everyone in Japan into sorcerers via I idol transfiguration? Tenjin says, he lacks the cursed energy to do that. Cursed energy that has been refined through Uzumaki cannot return to the sorcerer, triggering an evolution in each individual with uh, a curse technique is incredibly inefficient. The method of evolution that Kenjaku has chosen is the merging, there's the merging of humankind and me. Huh? Yuji says, is that even possible? Uh, and Megumi says, isn't that impossible for anyone but a star plasma vessel? Tenjin says, yes, the way I was before, but now that I've evolved for the past 11 years, it would not be impossible for me to merge with someone other than a star plasma vessel. Chosu goes, but you're one person, right? How could you merge with multiple people? Tenjin replies, I am not what you see before, uh, before you at this moment. My evolved soul exists all around us. As I said, myself is now the world itself. A human who merges with me transforms into something greater than a sorcerer, as a new being that is both there and not there. I possess barrier techniques, so I am able to maintain this form and self-control even after evolving. However, if humankind evolves, and even if only one person rages out of control, the world will end. Yuki goes, why? Senja says, there would be no boundaries between individuals, so evil would spread instantaneously. The impurity of, of a hundred million people would flood the world. What just happened to Tokyo would happen to the entire world. Yuji says, why would Kenjaku do that? Tenjin replies, I do not know. As I said, I cannot read the human hearts. Then Maki says, so why don't you just refuse to merge? Tenjin says, that is the problem. Now that I have evolved, I am more cursed spirit than human being. That makes me a target for cursed spirit manipulation. Damn. Fucking Kenjaku got the right fucking host. Holy shit. He's been plotting this for a long time. So they're all like, well, they're all looking. They all got that shocked look on their face. And then Tenjin continues, considering Kenjaku's ability as a sorcerer, he might be able to seize me the moment we encounter each other. That is why my main body is rejecting everything at the tombs of the star corridor. The Yuta says, and the reason you want guards, right? Tenjin goes, yes. Kenjaku is the second most powerful barrier user after me. I do not know when he will undo the seals on the tombs. Yuki goes, why now? Kenjaku prevented a merging with a star plasma vessel and forced your evolution and wants to consume and control you through cursed manipulation. Apparently he was involved with Sukuna, so he's been a sorcerer for at least 1,000 years. So why no? Kenjaku and Sukuna were boys. Star plasma vessel goes, I... The star plasma vessel and the six eyes are all connected by fate. Wait, I, the star plasma vessel and the six eyes are all connected by fate. In the past, Kenjaku has twice lost the sorcerers of the six eyes. The second time he took no chances and killed the star plasma vessel and six eyes less than one month after they were born. Nonetheless, on the day of merging, the six eyes and the star plasma vessel appeared. After that, Kenjaku switched to sealing instead of eradicating the six eyes and began searching for the prison realm. Because two bears of the six eyes cannot appear at the same time. Gee, that's smart. And that makes perfect sense. Yeah, the six eyes is broken. Um, fucking making your use of curse, curse energy infinitesimally small. 
broken. Uh, so yeah, it makes sense that you can't have two uh, two ability users of like a bloodline trait at the same time. So Kenjaku's a genius. Yo, seal these seal these bitches. You know, instead of fucking fighting them, just lock them away. Much easier. But then the unexpected happened eleven years ago. When Toji Zenin in intervened, and everyone's looking, then Maki and Megumi are alert. He was physically gifted through heaven reconstruction, and on top of that, he was an anom he was an anomaly and had escaped uh, and had escaped from cursed energy. As a human being who had escaped fate through the power of restriction, he destroyed our destinies. Then came along a boy with cursed manipulation. Suddenly, all the pieces had come together, except for the prison realm. Then, even the fell, then even that fell into to his hands six years ago. The Mugumi goes. So why is the calling game happening? Tension says it is like breaking into is like breaking in the body prior to merging. It is not impossible to merge with someone other than a star plasma vessel. But it's highly unlikely and would be incom it when would be incomplete at present. The calling game uses the player's cursed energy and the boundaries uh, binding barriers in a ritual for conveying the human beings of the country to uh, beings of this country to the other side. Through that custom, he will begin the merging with me. However, in order to perform such a ritual, Kenjaku has undertaken bind certain binding vows. One stipulates that he's not the game master. However, this does not work in your favor because the calling game will not end even if you kill him. The game will continue until all the players are dead or all the players refuse to participate and die. The clause mentioning long lasting additions to the rules ensure that nothing can interrupt the ritual. The, Mug the Mugumi says, which mean, and then uh, Yuta goes, uh-huh. Excluding the point value of a player's own life, players may spend 100 points to negotiate the game master to add one new rule to the calling game. Yuta says, uh, we have no choice but to participate in the calling game and add a rule whereby Sumiki and the other unwilling participants can get out. Mugumi says, we should also free Gojo-sensei. That guy could settle everything all on his own. Then Yuji goes, Master Tenjin. Uh, uh, and then Tenjin goes, first decide who stays. So you got Chosa and Chosu and Yuki. I will stay. Okay. Uh, so Chosu goes, Yuji, you absolutely uh, need ok Okuts Okatsu uh, for this woman's cooperation. Especially if Noritoshi Kamu if Kenjuku, Kenjaku comes here for Tenjin. Ending his life means salvation for my little brothers. Yuki goes, and I'm not done talking to Tenjin. Is that, is that all right, Okatsu? Uh, then Yuta goes, yeah, I don't want to leave the others. Tenjin goes, thank you. This is necessary for freeing Satoru Goju. It is, it is the back of the prison room. It is the back of the prison realm. Megumi goes back. Yuki goes, I've never heard of that. Yuji goes, you mean like a back gate? And Tenji goes, yes, that's right. Before Kenjaku found it, the prison realm was outside my barrier. I believe it was overseas. By sealing this rear gate, I was hiding the existence of the front, but it was no use. Satoru Goju, Satoru Goju is also sealed inside this rear gate. E then, if we open it, we can. Uh, so, I think, so this is uh, that was Yuji interrupting, and then Tenjin goes, "No, the authority to open the gate rests with Kenjaku as the bearer of the front. Breaking it open requires either the inverted spear of heaven that nullifies cursed techniques." or the black rope that disrupts and cancels cursed techniques. But Satoru Gojo uh, sealed the inverted spear of the heaven overseas 11 years ago or destroyed it. Yuji goes, Why, uh, why'd you do that, Sensei? The Megumi says, uh, and last year Satoru Gojo got rid of the black rope. So, no, so, so Tenji says uh, that Satoru Gojo got rid of the black rope. And Megumi goes, 
why that guy do that? Yuta says, I actually looked for the remaining black rope with Miguel in Africa. Mugumi says, oh, that's why you went overseas, huh? Y uh, Yuta replied, yes, but it was a fruitless effort. So there are talks with people in this old, this dude says, there isn't any more. Yuki says, but there is a way, right? Tension goes, yes. Among the players participating in the calling game is a sorcerer from a thousand years ago who calls herself an angel. Her curse technique can extinguish any curse technique. Calling game player Hana Caruso. Next chapter hits April 18th. All right, so there's a lot of information in this chapter, a lot of details. Um, so the introduction of the back. Okay, so so we saw Toji when he had the inverted spear. Uh, I'm pretty sure Toji had the inverted spear inside that. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, he had it inside that little fucking cursed spirit thing uh, that he had that had like an infinite stomach void. Um, all right, so I guess either they have to look for the spear or they're going to have to find uh, find the uh, find Hana. Uh, yeah, Hana and have her, I guess, undo the fucking, uh, undo it. So I'm real sorry. Right. Um, so they, I guess they have different routes they can go. Um, I don't know, an overseas arc to find the inverted spear sounds interesting, but I think they're, I think do with how the chapter ended, they're just going to go and convince Hana to join their side. Uh, but she's a, from a thousand years ago. So I wonder what fucking angle she's playing at. So she's also probably homies with with uh, uh, Sukuna as well too. Uh, maybe she has a vendetta against uh, Kenjaku. Maybe she has a vendetta against Sukuna. Um, but a cursed technique to extinguish cursed techniques. Broken ability. These cursed techniques, techniques are some of them are just dumb, broken, and domain expansions. Oh, self embodiment of perfection. Oh. Need, I had to change underwear a few times. Um, but yeah, this was a really good chapter. A lot of great information. Uh, really answering a lot of the questions. Um, and like, Noritoshi's plan, it was, it, he executed beautifully. Um, he sacrificed a, he sacrificed basically all of his crew, but he got Goju sealed. And, and Goju's just broken. That hollow purple and his fucking limitless void, dumb. Just dumb. Like he's dumb broken. Um, but he's a fucking awesome character. Um, but yeah, we'll see how this fucking rescue arc goes. Um, I'm not even sure if we even call it that rescue arc. Um, it's finding the angel, and then I guess we're gonna get the rescue arc. So, but awesome chapter, and I, I'm also we're assuming we're gonna get a confrontation between Kenjaku versus Chosu and Yuki. And one of them, if not both, will probably die. Um, or we'll see, or, cause like, this show, this manga surprisingly kills a lot of people. Um, holy shit. Um, Nobara, how I even forgot to mention Nobara, bruh. I seriously hope she's not dead. I hope she comes back. I hope, like, Everything is gonna look des there's gonna be desperation, everything's all lost, and then you're gonna see fucking her nails just fly out the where fly out somewhere and pencil on the head. I don't fucking know. Please bring her back. Don't let her be dead. Uh but a really good chapter. Uh, seven point five out of ten. Uh, a lot of information, a lot of exposition. Uh so can't wait for next week. Uh so let me know in the comment section what was your favorite part of the chapter. Uh, peace out, manga after dark out.